Styles on this fifth Sunday after Trinity. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart he will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done, and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in our vocation and ministry we may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come out the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ 
according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. That is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I sort of begin to get it. The ministry of Jesus, the storyteller, is during a pandemic, except that that one had been going on for nearly a hundred years. The disease of the Roman occupation. We can't lock down in weeks or months. We who were born free are sensitive to the loss of our freedoms. Jesus, the storyteller, speaking to great crowds who longed for the new normal, when the Romans had been conquered and their country was theirs again. We've been reminded that anxious people cannot concentrate. Exhausted people switch off. Fearful people need to be comforted. Frustrated people erupt when provoked. Enter the storyteller and his stories. Stories about the random nature of the kingdom of God. And he's given his hearers something to laugh at and remember. We may be more open to God when we have to think and puzzle about what is going on. Peter Hall said this about Judy Dench. Like all great actors, she has an ability to be comic. She can make the audience laugh in order to make them understand. Such great crowds gathered around Jesus that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. So who is the one at sea here? Jesus in a boat or the crowds on the beach? Listen, the story, like the boat that bobs here and there on the waves, it's sometimes nearer the shore and sometimes further out. The sower who went to sow is a story we think we grasp and then we don't. Look, it's not where we thought it was. It was over there a moment ago, now it's here. 
A sower went out to sow, and, he sow and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path. Parables work slowly. They weren't instant and open to all who heard them. Hence the explanation, today's gospel is in two parts, the narrative in verses 1 to 9, and the explanation just for the disciples in verses 18 to 23. The crowds, the crowds are all at sea. We're rightly proud of our vegetables in window boxes and tomato plants in grow bags, all this planting and growing, but it's not our livelihood. We're not anxious about the harvest for our survival. Jesus' hearers were farming people who never got far from the land in Galilee. Soil and seed and seasons were the stuff of everyone's lives, as drought was the stuff of their starvation, as it is for some communities today. No one in their right mind would set out to scatter seed on barren ground and among thorn bushes. We can't guess the ending, so we'd better listen. It's an uneven story, because farming is an uneven way of life. Look with pity on the poor farmer. The taxation system devoured so much of any profit, like the birds and the rocks and the thorns in the story. It was a constant battle to stay out of debt. And the parable ends with a final flourish. Seed that fell on good soil produced grain a hundredfold. An exaggeration that is mind-blowingly daft. All this happens in springtime, the time of the resurrection, the beginning of the seasons of promise of spring and summer. There's failure. The birds, the rocks, the thistles. It's not deliberate, it's just how it is like the past six months. Not what we would have wished for. Not a raging success for some of us. A kingdom in which there is failure, miracle and normality. In the end, the harvest is ordinary and everyday. The kingdom of God does not need perfection and wall-to-wall -wall success. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray. We bring to you, Lord, all the church workers, the deacons, priests and bishops, for they are a comforting presence in a hurting world as they continue to signpost towards God. We pray for all those churches which have reopened, and especially for those which are yet unable to open. We hold their clergy and worshiping community before you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who continue to stay indoors, remembering that they are protecting others as well as themselves. We especially bring before God those who are the unemployed and the self-employed, for their need of God is great. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We hold before you all of the small traders and shopkeepers as they provide lifelines in the community, along with the delivery drivers and postal workers. As we begin to return to some sense of normal, we give thanks for the hospital workers, the ambulance crews, the doctors, the nurses, 
the care assistants and the cleaners. Remembering they continue to stand between us and sickness. We pray for all those workers who have been at work since the lockdown began. For their patience and fortitude in the face of long hours and frustration. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for single parents as they cope alone with their responsibilities and little respite. We bring to you, Lord, those who are alone and have no one to be with in a bubble. Let them know that they are all children of God, and with God they will never be lonely. We especially pray for those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, Let us pray for those who have died, and for those who will die today. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Together with Giles, Luke, and all the saints, we offer these and all of our prayers to you, O God. Merciful Father, and accept so. these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, and the splendor. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels, praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. We praise and bless you, loving God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that bread, broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised him. He broke the bread gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So God, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. 
bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Giles and Luke and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, grant us peace. See the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you. Eat in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rain fall softly upon your fields until we meet again. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all whom you love, this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.